So I think this is going to be the last lecture I record here in Japan. Um, I was hoping to get through uh, material behavior. I have lectures on steel and on concrete material behavior, but I think I'll save those for when I come back. Um, here's a cool little thing. I'm, I'm actually uh, faculty here, like adjunct faculty. It helps them pay me easier. And uh, I got some kind of pin, it's some kind of anniversary. Uh, so uh, every professor got one of these. I don't have a Wyoming pin yet, but now I have a pin for Tokyo Institute of Technology or Tokyo Tech. Okay, so um, what we're gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna do a, a lecture on working stress design, which if you remember is from the pre 70s. Uh, and I'll talk about why we're doing this. Why, why would you wanna learn something from, from the 70s? Uh, that's a long time ago. Um, and then I'll go over the basic uh, principles involved in that. So uh, here we go. Let's see. Oh, and I've also figured out how to stop um, all those announcements from popping down on the top of my iPad. Uh, so that that has gone away, I think. So um, I saw. Uh, my wife was uh, trying to tell me something while I was doing the last lecture. Um, so it's one in the morning here, and it's, uh, that means it's nine in the morning back home where you are. So actually, uh, in about an hour, you'll not be going to our class, right? Okay, so uh, this is, should be uh, nine in the morning, Wednesday, your time. Anyway, uh, working stress design. <clears throat> so why uh, would you do this? It's the old way of designing. Um, the reason we're doing it is that the fundamentals of working stress design are the principles we will use in calculating deflections. So here's the basic idea, again, Sorry, stress in concrete is F, not sigma. You're used to this. Stress is M, Y over I, but we're using F. So the basic idea is stress is F, M, Y over I, but the problems are uh, the beam is cracked because remember concrete doesn't have um, tensile strength or very little tensile strength, and that there's steel. And how is steel affecting the stresses in the beam? Okay. So we have a cracked section. And what we're going to do, uh, so here's a beam. The bottom is going to be in tension. So you put steel down there. Here's the neutral axis. Remember, that's uh, uh, the balance point where um, the stress is zero. Uh, so this will be in compression above the neutral axis and below the neutral axis it should be in tension but we're just going to assume there's no concrete below it and so what that means is that the beam uh, will look like this so oops, let me draw back in the top half of that rectangle so the beam is going to look like that there's missing a concrete but it's got steel but there's concrete above the neutral axis <clears throat> again we're going to assume no slip we talked about that earlier, and we talked about the implications of no slip, the exact same slide, okay? Uh, these will uh, <coughs> stretch the same amount, so the epsilon on the concrete, the strain in the concrete will equal the strain in the steel. Okay, we, we talked about this, right? The stress in the steel um, is E of steel times the strain, and the stress in the concrete is E of concrete times the strain, and the strains are the same because it's not slipping. Okay, and so the forces are the stress times the area, so stress, and remember stress is E times strain. Okay, we went through all this, we did that, and uh, we ended up with uh, a transformed area. Uh, N times the area of steel is 
uh, the equivalent area of concrete. Okay, so what's E? Uh, e of steel is always 27, 29 million PSI. E of concrete, uh, you can use this formula. Uh, this has to be in PSI and this will come out in PSI. So here's a big thing for this class. <clears throat> Whenever you see a square root of F prime C in an equation uh, in uh, English units, the F prime C is always, always, always in PSI. And the answer is always, always, always in PSI. Okay, so how do you use all this? <coughs> you get the A transform, which is N times the area of steel, and N is E steel over E concrete. And remember, E concrete is uh, 57,000 square root F prime C, PSI. Uh, then you get a moment of inertia transformed and then you can use the M Y over I transform to get the moment of inertia. So here's an example. Okay, this is 18 inches. Uh, uh, this is 30 inches, but the distance from the top to the center of the steel, that's D. Okay, and we'll talk more about this in, a, in another lecture. Uh, but that's 27.5 inches. It's two and a half inches short of the 30. Okay. Uh, there's six square inches of steel. Here's the F prime C in PSI. And this is grade 60 steel. Uh, we'll have that lecture, but that means the yield stress of the steel is 60 KSI, which is 60,000 PSI. Okay. Fine. Uh, the maximum service moment for getting this stress and uh, getting this stress. Okay, so the allowable stresses. 0.4 times uh, 60 is 24, that's the allowable steel stress. So going back to this, uh, the steel stress is less than 0.4 of the yield and the concrete stress is less than 45% of the F prime C. And then uh, the F prime C was what again? 4,500. So this is 4,500 or 4.5 KSI. And this is concrete. Okay. Uh, so the overall strategy is we know the stress is MY over I. Uh, we just calculated F. Uh, so if we could get uh, Y and I, you could do this. M equals F I over Y. Okay, so the goal is to get Y and I. Okay, so what we're gonna do to get the moment of inertia is we're gonna transform the steel, find the neutral axis, and then get the moment of inertia. Okay, so transform the steel. E is 29 million PSI or 29,000 KSI. Okay, remember, this has to be PSI. That will be in PSI. So if you take the square root of 4,500 multiplied by 57,000, you get this, 3.8 million. Okay, so if you take, uh, you know, obviously get the units right, uh, that, that's 29,000 KSI over 3,820 KSI, okay, divided by 1,000. And that's uh, 7.6. So the transformed amount of steel, there's actually six square inches, but the equivalent concrete, remember I said is about eight, uh, eight times that, but 7.58. 45 square inches of concrete equals uh, six square inches of steel. Okay, so here's a picture. Um, <clears throat> Uh, this distance to the neutral axis in, in concrete, we call it, instead of C, uh, we call it, or Y, we call it KD, okay? Uh, and this was way before Kevin Durant. So anyway, uh, 
there's the amount of steel that the amount of concrete that equals the steel. So six square inches of steel equals 45.51 square inches of concrete. And it's at a depth of uh, 27.5 inches. Okay, so you find the neutral axis by statics. The definition of neutral axis is no balance, I think, uh, like a teeter-totter. And so this will balance this, okay? So uh, we want the area, 18 times KD, okay, times the distance, we're balancing about this line right here. Okay, so the distance from that line to the center of that rectangle is KD over two. That has to equal the bottom area, 45.51 times this distance. That's just uh, D minus KD, right? With KD to the top, from the top to the neutral axis, D to the top, KD from the neutral axis to the top, the difference is D minus KD. Okay. <clears throat> Here it is. Um, it's a quadratic equation. Uh, put it in your calculator or, or use the quadratic formula. Uh, you get it's 9.532 inches to uh, the neutral axis. Okay, so get I. Um, I'm gonna do that. This is uh, 9.532. This is 18. The moment of inertia of a rectangle about the bottom, not the middle, is one third base times height cubed. And then this is uh, the moment of inertia of this, that distance is uh, uh, 27.5 minus 9.532. Remember it's 80 squared, there's A, and then here's that distance squared. And you get this for the moment of inertia. <coughs> okay, so the concrete stress is MI over I. Here's that allowable. M, Y over I. Um, this is in kips and inches. And so uh, the moment that will make uh, the concrete hit 2.03 KSI is uh, 4225 inch kips divided by 12, 352 foot kips. That's a lot of moment. Okay. Uh, the steel stress, okay, is N times the concrete stress. Okay, so the stress we're about to calculate with MY over I is for concrete. And remember, steel has N times the stress. Okay, so uh, the allowable is 24. Uh, let's see, N, okay, about 8. M, Y, okay, that's the distance from here, right? And so that's... 27.5 minus 9.532, which I guess comes out to 17.968 over I. And then you get 292 foot kips. Okay, so which happens first? Do you hit the allowable concrete or steel first? It's the lower one. Uh, so the allowable moment is 292 foot kips. Okay. But do you really?